Fowler Fowler here to Good Evening, leading our news bulletin for tonight. Government is about to be taken to court over procedures introduced in some changes of the new government structure, as well as the oath of allegiance taken by a member of parliament whilst in New Zealand. Common Role Member of Parliament from Alofi South, Honourable Tungia Sioniholo, has filed an application with the Justice Department for declaratory judgment pursuant to Article 51 of the Constitution, claiming the swearing-in of the Oath of Allegiance does not satisfy Article 51 of the Constitution. The application for a declaratory judgment pursuant to Article 51 in the new Constitution in Section 9A and E the New Assembly Act 1966, to declare the swearing-in of the duly elected member for the Toy Village constituency in Auckland, New Zealand, does not satisfy Article 51 of the Constitution, and therefore of no effect and consequently does not meet requirements of Section 9E of the New Assembly Act 1969, and for the Toy seat to be declared vacant. The application is against the Speaker of the House and the Minister for Crown Law, Honourable Toketalangi. Another contested procedure is the appointment of two new assistants to the ministers that were not previously established in the Constitution. An application for a declaratory judgment pursuant to Article 5 of the new Constitution, the order declaring the appointment of assistant ministers, ultra virus, the Constitution as and is therefore invalid and of no effect and any extra remuneration over and above as members of the new legislative assembly as provided in the civil list act to seize and payments already made to be paid back to government. The application is against Premier Honourable Toketalangi and two assistants to the ministers. An official appointment has been made today for the third commissioner of the Niue Public Service Commission. It has been some time since the post has been vacant to enable the cabinet to find a suitable candidate. The appointment was made official today that Mrs. Georgina Tukiuha is the final commissioner for the Niue Public Service Commission. Mrs. Tukiuha was formerly the clerk to cabinet and will be completing her employment at Falifono tomorrow and will take up her new posting next week. Yesterday, Niue joined the Regional Tsunami Pacific Wave 11 drill at the Niue Primary School that had five different departments on their toes, testing out the communication and evacuation plans put in place. Organized by the Niue Met Service and the Niue Police Department, the drill was based on a scenario from the Tsong Trench, and the exercise began at 10 in the morning with a quick response from the Early Childhood Centre and Niue Primary School. Although it was a drill exercise, judging by the reaction from the youngsters, it did become a bit too real, some needing reassurance and comforting. There were mixed reactions, but the idea was to identify gaps in the evacuation plan and also to ensure that all bases were covered. Uh, I think what came out, of the, came out of it for police sort of view is some of the issues we're going to have with some of the younger kids, the ECE kids, that ranged in emotions from not being able to get into the police truck quick enough um, being excited to go for rides with the ones that were quite scared, even though um, they'd obviously been told it was a drill. So those are issues that the police are going to have to deal with. Um, it was a shame our weather didn't play the, play the game, because it would have been really nice to have done the whole exercise with get all the kids up that track to the, to the um, hospital, where Anne's team had um, a place for them to go and sit um, while the exercise was taking place. We're going to try and do it next year. Um, probably maybe March, April, once the cycling season's passed, uh, where the weather's going to play the game a bit, where we'll actually get them to form up, um, like they did uh, at, the, at the top of the education centre, and actually walk up the track. Because it's important to know how long it takes for the kids to get up there, um, which classes you send off first, uh, and that was the whole purpose of yesterday's exercise. Really helpful, I think, the, for the teachers yesterday, um, from the point of view of getting the kids from the classroom, up the top, doing the roll call. So from that point of view, it was um, really well worthwhile. As I said, just a shame our weather didn't quite play the game. Uh, it was a decision we had to make um, to cancel the walk because of all the rain we'd had. At the end of the day, it was just an exercise and it wasn't worth putting the kids at risk of slipping over. Um, lots of big puddles up there, so we just had to cancel it. When asked why Newit chose to focus on the schools rather than a national tsunami exercise, it came down to resources and time. 
but it is something that the Disaster Council will consider in future to carry out more regular drills for the island to be prepared for a range of disasters. That's our largest concentration of population at any given weekday down by the reef. Um, it's obviously the future of, of Nui as well with the young kids. Um, we chose it because in the event of a, of a tsunami emergency where it was the decision was made to evacuate the primary school, most of the police resources on any given day of the week, you might have four or five police staff, would be taken up for that evacuation. Part of the um, organisation with the other departments involved like BCN um, and Nui Met and Telecom was that their role would very much be alerting the rest of the community um, about the tsunami warning because police will not be able to um, respond to other parts if they are focusing on an evacuation of the school. Something else that came out of it and what we're going to try and do for next year is the kids know what they're doing now um, and the teachers have a very good idea of, of how to um, start that evacuation off to get them up to the education department. What we need to do now is make sure the parents know what's happening. So what we're going to look at is six, a small amount of funding from perhaps SOPAC or SPREP over the next couple of months and put together a little information booklet for the kids. Um, now this might focus on what to do in a cyclone, what to do in a tsunami and what to do in an earthquake. And that could be taken home by the school kids um, to give to mums and dads. And it will have simple practical advice in there. Like, so for a tsunami warning, mums and dads know that the primary school kids in the event of an evacuation will be going up to the hospital grounds. So they can therefore get up to the hospital without putting themselves at risk by trying to pick up their kids from the primary school. Uh, and that's just so everyone knows what's going on. So that's, that's the goal for probably early next year, is to put out a little booklet like that, just to follow on from what we're doing. The new Tsunami Pacific Wave drill was officially cancelled just after 7 yesterday evening. Niwe will be the first in the region to embark on the path to conduct a national health survey targeting non-communicable diseases using technology to its advantage. Selected health staff have been in training this week with three trainers from the World Health Organization to ensure that they are prepared to take on the task of gathering this important information. We spoke with the WHO group team leader Leanne Riley to see what the significance of the information from this National NCD Health Survey will determine the state or prevalence of NCDs on the island. This information will be the very first time Nui has um, had information about the prevalence of NCDs in the population, so it will be able to give the health department uh, information about how many people in Nui have diabetes across the whole population, who have uh, hypertension or raised blood pressure, um, and, and for the risk factors for NCDs like tobacco, um, alcohol use and diet, it will provide information that the health department will then be able to use to plan services for, for people in the country. Inviting people, all adults over the age of 15 in the country to come to each village when the survey team is there and to take part in a survey which will involve asking questions about the risk factors for NCDs and then taking physical measurement like blood pressure, um, height and weight and, uh, and blood tests for the sugar and fat in people's blood to look at things like the prevalence of diabetes um, and the other risk factors for NCDs. Leanne says that the use of modern technology and ease of gathering information is what will make this process somewhat different, especially when health workers conduct interviews and tests. They'll be interviewed by someone using a very small computer. It's held in your hand and it just is a tool to record all the information that uh, comes out of the questions that people will be asked and also to record all of the physical measures and the results of all the blood tests. That information is collected together and then used to calculate um, what are the prevalence of the risk factors and diseases for NCDs here in Nui. How uh, successful has it been in gathering the data information required? We've been using it globally through the World Health Organization for the last couple of years, but Nui is one of the first countries here in this region to move to use this kind of technology. The advantage is that it's much quicker um, to, to, to have the information for the whole population as soon as the survey is finished. 
So all of the information gets recorded at the time the person is interviewed or measured, and it's very quickly compiled to give a health picture, a health check for the whole population as well as for the individual. So the advantage for Nui is that there will be, if everybody participates, the results will be available very quickly. The data and information from this survey will be very beneficial for planning purposes and will hopefully be available by the beginning of next year. Rugby competition around the island became more competitive this week as players compete to represent the island at this year's Oceania Cup 15-a-side tournament in Papua New Guinea in three weeks and four local players will represent the island in the famous International Rugby Semi Series in the Gold Coast in a couple of weeks. The first international event is the International Rugby Sevens competition in the Gold Coast that will see many high-ranking teams compete will also field a team for Niue. Four local players are set to depart next week to the much-publicized tournament in Brisbane after Niue qualified during the South Pacific Games in August to September this year. Fifteen or more players will depart the week after for the Foru Oceania Cup in Papua New Guinea. The Oceania Cup is Foru's showpiece rugby event for development and targeted unions, contested by American Samoa, the Cook Islands, Niue, Tahiti, New Caledonia, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu and Wallace and Futuna. The 2011 Oceania Cup will be hosted by the Papua New Guinea Rugby Football Union in the first two weeks of December 2011. Niue won the tournament in 2008 and Papua New Guinea in 2009. We wish both teams the best. Niue won the Foru Cup in 2008. The selection game for PNG is scheduled this afternoon at the Niue High School. Improving television production standard has been the focus of the final workshop held at Kilocuts this week. This is the third workshop funded through the UNESCO IPTC Communication Funds. Training was facilitated by Holga Carsten and the number for the numbers for the training have been limited due to limited numbers of workstations and software available. Kolokut's manager Shane Talvaka says that this training will hopefully provide more skills and raise the production levels of multimedia practitioners on the island. Participants have been working on projects using Photoshop Illustrator and After Effects applications. The workshop will conclude tomorrow. And that concludes our news bulletin here in VCN for tonight. We do hope that you have an enjoyable weekend and are able to join us again for our next news bulletin next week.